I think we should be pretty much ready. Are you feeling chatty today? I'm feeling... No, what if I said no? I'm uh, not that would be horrible. Chatty. And then you be... sit here and you do your podcast. <laughs> I have a guest in the house. He's not speaking today, but it's Jeffrey J. Now, here are my thoughts. <laughs> and just do it solo, but with you in the room watching. Mm-hmm. I chuckle every once in a while. Why not? <laughs> Just a quick, you're my Ed McMahon. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm that, you know, on radio shows, how they have the producer in the back that's not mic'd, <laughs> and he'll laugh or say a comment every once in a while. Yeah, I just need you to be a little more Ed McMahon in your laugh if you're going to do that, though. It's got to be that ho, ho, ho. I've never been that manly in my life. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's never happening. We're in trouble already. I know. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unbothered by Ty Rivera. As always, coming to you from high atop Ty Rivera Studios, a.k.a. Casa de Bijou. <laughs> Today, our guest is Mr. Jeffrey J. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only person squeakier than you. <laughs> yeah, I'm still more nasal, though. You, you are a little more nasal. I'm I don't know. So, I'm kind of nasally too. Yeah, you're pretty nasal. <laughs> yeah. You can't like give me kind of a compliment and then take it back. Well, I just realized. Yeah, <laughs> after you were, talked a little more, I was like, no, Jeffrey might have me beat in the nasal department. I'm a little Fran Drescher. Can I have nothing anymore? <laughs> you can't. Can I? Can I just be the best at anything? Hey, now that Milo's gone, I think you'll be the most controversial fag. You know, I think Milo is going to make a comeback. You think so? I really do think so. If you listen to the press conference he did when he was le- leaving Breitbart, he mm-hmm. left himself a lot of outs. Yeah. Like he finally claimed um, victimhood, which mm. like he retracted almost right after. Yeah. But I think that was him leaving the door open for, hey, I'm a victim. And Ooh. you should understand that a lot of this has been me acting out. Ooh. That's what I feel like he was saying on the subconscious. Interesting. He'll make a, an, a, an apologetic comeback? I don't know if it'll be apologetic. I'd imagine it would be still Milo style just to keep yeah. with the brand. But I think he'll... Because um, there's a lot of us that could claim victimhood. You know, it's just not what we do. Yeah, totally. So, you know, and when you choose not to exercise that, I think you always have the option of going back and being like, hey... You want to know why this is? You want to know why I say these kinds of things? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, and for a lot of us, the things that people are pretending are so inflammatory really aren't inflammatory at all for some of us. It's just a matter of the way you speak. Absolutely. In the community that you're in. Exactly. And when you're speaking to the public, there's a lot of communities that are listening. And it, what's getting me lately is that there are people that aren't even parts of particular communities that are getting super offended on behalf of other people. Ooh. And that's been for a while, but l- lately it just seems like they're extra militant about it. And it's like, why are you so militant? You're not even a part of this community on any level. Yeah, at a level I get really annoyed by it. Like people attacking uh, Jimmy Kimmel and saying... Like the word, the words microaggressions. Oh, yeah. It's it's one of those words that gets me. Yeah. Well, I had posted one time about, um, you know, how I was terrible with uh, grammar and punctuation because I only have a ninth grade education. Uh Uh-huh. And this woman had chimed in that's like a regular Facebook friend. And she was like, you know... I've always found found you to be well spoken, and you know it's, it, this is the kind of comment she left. And then another guy chimes in. Technically, that's a microaggression because you're telling a brown person. And I was just like, "Oh, is there no context involved? Did, did oh. you not see the comment where I said that it was because of my ninth grade education?" And then this woman is talking about my ninth grade education, not the fact that I'm brown. Not oh, for a yeah. Mexican, you sound really, you know. Yeah. And can't you give me this compliment? Do you have to turn it into an insult because you want to? Yeah. Suddenly now I'm supposed to be angry with this woman. Yeah. Instead of excited that someone thinks you write gooder. (laughs) (laughs) Now you're making fun. (laughs) Now. Um, (laughs) That was a major aggression. (laughs) That wasn't micro at all. (laughs) So for anybody at home that doesn't know, you identify as or... 
Yes. What's I, the proper way? <laughs> what am I? What am I saying? Oh, here? you're being so sweet and PC. <laughs> the show has just begun. Uh, I identify as transgender, and sometimes people because. I'll go on podcasts and people don't know, and I'll be like, "Hey, I'm Jeffrey. I'm transgender." And they're like, "You didn't have to say that right away." And I go, "Well, I don't give a shit, and I want people to know because eventually I'm going to make a joke about it." Yeah, it makes everything else make so much more sense. When <laughs> just like this is what it is. Totally, because at some point, I always feel shitty when I'm making jokes and someone's not in on it. Mm-hmm. Because then you feel like you're telling an inside joke and nobody thinks those are funny. Yeah, well, I found that even with being gay and as gay as I am, if I go on stage and don't actually say that I'm gay, I just start doing jokes about you know my life and yeah. stuff like that. Once we get to the gay part, everybody looks so confused, like... No. He's gay? No. Oh, he's giving blowjobs to women? <laughs> <laughs> so I was giving this chick a blowjob. It's what it is. <laughs> 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 I do, I have to admit, I hate when women say that somebody was giving them head. Get that when a girl says they were giving them head? Yeah. yeah and not- I also am not a fan of women saying jerking off. Like a girl saying she was jerking off yeah, herself? Yeah. No, that's, you know what? That's weird. I think they have the ninth grade education because you can't jerk. I know, but that's what they, that's a term that's, they've, they've kind of, uh, what's the word? Appropriated. <laughs> Oh my God! They're taking that term back, and they're gonna jerk off all over the place. Yeah, they've appropriated jerking off and giving head. You know, like some guys just don't know how to give head, and it's like, what are you talking about? I'm more, I'm more okay with giving head because you are giving your head to the action. (laughs) I hate you so much. I hate you. But jerking off, I don't, I don't agree with because you're not jerking anything. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't know enough about women's actual <laughs> masturbation. I think I've seen it a couple of times on well, I know I've seen it a couple of times on porn. Yeah, you know when I always see stuff I don't want to see like vaginas. Uh <laughs> when you're watching porn and they have those side ads on porn, it bothers the shit out of me because you're like, I didn't, I'm here for this video, the two side ads that are also sped up way too much. Yeah. You notice that they're really fast now? Yeah. And it's usually <laughs> something like MILF or, you yeah. know, like, it's just like, I'm not into MILFs. No, it's a giant, I'm here in the gay porn section. You think, oh, I just saw a MILF ass. Maybe I'll go over and try that a bit. <laughs> Maybe I need to check out the MILFs. It's their secret... Way to try and convert you? Maybe. It's a a secret conversion therapy. Yeah. And you, okay, so you started off as lesbian? Yeah, I was a lesbian chick. For how long? long? From 14 to 21. Okay. I was super lesbian. Not that I was butch. I used to dress very girly. But I was super lesbian in that, like, I slept with a lot of women Mm -hmm. and never slept with a man. And then... You decided to transition. Mm-hmm. At, when I was 21, I took my first shot of testosterone, and within two weeks, my second puberty hit, and I all of a sudden liked men and don't like women anymore. Yeah, I was talking about that with another friend of mine, and she was saying that it's the way it works out is that if you're gay, you're gay. It's, it's weird because I didn't... Uh, I did know that that was a thing back then. Back then, because that's just like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. 30. Wow, you're old. Shut up. (laughs) Son of a bitch. You're (laughs) old. What's it like being 30? You know what? (laughs) Shut up. Your abs aren't as perfect as they used to be, Ty. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so uh, where was I going with that? Um, my abs aren't as perfect as they need to be, yeah, or as they used about to be. Abs. Is all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh where I'm going to stay stuck for the rest of this conversation. <laughs> You've stunted this episode of Unbothered. Oh my god! So no, so weirdly, uh, I switched, and this was a thing I did not expect because I thought I was going to be a straight guy. 
I was like, ooh, straight guy, this is going to be fun and cool. And then all of a sudden I liked men, and I had to figure that out. And uh, the only thing that I liked about it when I switched and now love about it is that for that small amount of time that I was straight, Mm -hmm. it felt weird. Because when you grow up gay and you identify as gay, and that's the one thing, we didn't give a shit about sports. We had no Mm -hmm. pride in that. You love the fact that you're gay once you get that confidence, and losing that sucked. Yeah. No, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went out for a little bit, but I've come back home. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like AA. You had to come back and announce to the others. I know. <laughs> Look, guys, I had, I had a lapse. There I went back moment. out. <laughs> almost lost my job being straight. <laughs> but I pulled it together, and now I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> Things are welcome back, Jeffrey. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to have a friend. (laughs) How long were you straight for? Uh, I tried. I tried to identify as straight for probably almost a year. Okay. But then once I realized that I wasn't, then I was so scared because I'd never had sex with a guy before, and I was so scared. I was twenty-two at the time. That uh, I actually put an ad on Craigslist, and I lost my virginity to a dude on Craigslist. Yeah, I remember you telling me that, and that was so weird to me. Because yeah. I was just like... Which is amazing with your history. I know. That, that is the weird thing well, to Well, it's you. just, you know, because Craigslist, and that that would be your way of... Because uh, I... Even I was a traditional girl when I was younger. <laughs> you know, I... Yeah. <laughs> Well, you not- jumped to the two dogs and the white picket doggy <laughs> fence in between your kitchen and your living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's not even usually there. Usually it's just dogs everywhere. <laughs> oh my That's God. only so Bijou doesn't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you a little shit right now? No, she's actually very sweet, and she would be really cool if she was out here with you. She mm-hmm. just gets mad because she has to be on the other side of the fence, and then she's like, you know, <laughs> I want to I wanna go meet people. I want to go, you know, jump on their lap and whatever else. And first, she'll sniff you out, and then she'll be more annoying than you want her to be. See, now that's the term that girls should use, sniff you out. <laughs> <laughs> he sniffed me out. He totally <laughs> sniffed me out last night. That makes sense. <laughs> Jerking off doesn't. So here's the thing I wanted to find out from you. Because um, why are you so annoying? Just playing. Could you imagine <laughs> if that's where we went? Why are you... Uh, how did you get so comfortable with yourself? Because when I originally met you, it was in Addison, Texas. And I, you were living there at the time working for the improv. And I was there to do some gay shows that were called Stand Up Proud that I was partly putting on. And what happened was the guys that worked for the club, they didn't know how to tell me (laughs) that you were trans, but they wanted you to be on the show because you had done a lot of the promoting and street team type stuff. Yeah. So the guys were trying to find a way to put it, and they were like, okay, we have this friend, Jeffrey, that we think would be really great for your show, and he's working right now, but I don't know if you got, you can put him on. Uh, but I don't know how you like her. I mean, him. or And I knew what they were getting yeah. at. As soon as they did the her, him, yeah. then right away I knew. Yeah. And, of course, I was fine with it. Cause I, I remember because my boss told me, he goes... He goes, I was like, I was trying to explain it to him. And then he just goes, just bring it back here. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and you didn't know what, uh, what he was getting at, but he kn- you knew I was some sort of trans. Yeah. You got that, and you just cut him off and just, just bring it back here. <laughs> and, then, and he thought after the moment was over, he felt so great about it, and he thought it was so funny. And I've told that story probably a million times because it's so funny. And then, yeah, and that's how we met. And I was in Texas doing it. I got comfortable with it because I tried to do stand-up and not talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also did stand-up when I was a girl, Yeah, when I was 18, and I was not funny at all. And So men really are funnier. <laughs> I would never <laughs> say that. <laughs> but I will say this. I was an attractive white girl whose parents had bought them a car. Yeah. 
no, I had no problems and no one gave two shits about me because they couldn't relate. And what's really insane is now that I'm transgender, people can relate to my problems, which is insanity. Yeah. And you just have to talk about the things that are real. And you know that because you talk about things that are real. And if you don't, you're not being an honest comic and people see right through that. Yeah, no, I definitely do agree with that. When people aren't being honest, like when people that aren't edgy try to do edgy stuff, you always see through it. You're always like, why is this person just trying to shock me right now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Because it's obvious that's not their life. And then somebody can do something that's really shocking or sound would would appear to be really shocking, but because it's authentic and you get the sense that that is their real life, you're like, oh, yeah, this isn't really shocking at all. It's just a person telling me their story. Absolutely. And that's the thing, too, is like uh, there's a secondary thing with people like us who have gone through shit in life that Mm -hmm. we are willing to talk about and that is everyone else has gone through shit and they have similar experiences that they don't talk about and you help them get through that with laughter and think shit mine wasn't as bad yeah and it's it's kind of weird the connections people will make it's good but it's also kind of sometimes it's like they'll come up to you and they'll be like or with me they'll be like you know I can relate to you. I'm not gay, but, and they'll make this connection that I'm cool with their making. I don't feel like offended yep. or anything, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, that's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay, but I hate black people. Yeah, and it's wait, like, what? wait, I never said, <laughs> well, it, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> reel it back a bit. Oh. Hey, I need you to be quiet, little girl. <laughs> He's talking to his dog, by the way, not st- me. <laughs> <laughs> You forget we're podcasting. I'm not going to edit this out. It's going to stay in. People need to know that Bijou is getting on my goddamn nerves today. She's not usually this chatty while I'm trying to do the podcast. You know what it is? Uh, The combination of both of us using large sweeping hand motions. Yeah, there is a lot of gayness happening right now. It's a goddamn musical. It's unbothered the musical. We could conduct a (laughs) symphony right now with our hand movements. You're right. I hadn't even noticed there was a lot of like <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh it doesn't God. matter what our words are saying our hands are like girl let me <laughs> tell you <laughs> Oh, my God. We got to do a show again together, Ty. I can't wait till we can do a show again. You know, this is one of the things, one of the things I like about you so much is that you are so open and you are so easy to talk to. And it reminds me a lot of the friends that I had when I was younger, because now trans has turned into this thing where people are offended by everything. And it's like, I can't deal with you and you're new. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, young trans people. Uh, you, your life is is tough. I know that, but sometimes shut up, because some of us did it when trans wasn't even a word mm-hmm. in South Texas, and some of us had to deal with people calling us things, and it 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 made me stronger. Oh yeah, it made me stronger. That's the way I feel with gay. Like I really do feel like it made me stronger. And the other thing that young trans people need to remember it in some cases is that some of us have been supporting our trans fans for a long time. So there is a certain political correctness that I'm not going to pay attention to pay attention to because I'm like, yeah, that doesn't really apply to me. That's for the people that really don't get it and need this, you know, like these are the rules so that you don't disrespect people. Oh yeah. I had a girl come up to me when I was doing a a college show which by the way college shows are clean shows Mm -hmm. so you know you can curse every once in a while but you don't typically do it and it's very respectful and a girl said that I was uh misogynistic and I and I said listen not only is this not misogynistic but I had to learn to tell jokes to audiences in South Texas who had never heard or seen a trans person Mm -hmm. in a way that they would understand. I would never dream of using the word cisgender in a Mm stand-up special. The the fact that someone would expect me to... I mean, you live in college world, first of all, which is very PC. 
you don't live in an area where I was doing comedy, and so were you. We were doing comedy in sports bars in the South mm -hmm. to people where we had to say things in a way that made them okay with it and let them understand who we were <clears throat> and use words that were in their vocabulary. That's one of the biggest things. People don't understand that. Like, you really did have to start these people, like, from the beginning and within whatever set we're doing. And a lot of times, like, when you're first starting out, like, you, when because you actually started in Texas yeah. where, you know, like, I ended up going when I was a little further in my growth. So when I first started doing Texas, I was able to at least have 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, in a lot of cases, you were doing, like, the 7 to 10 minute sets Jeez, where you just have to take them all the way. I had to, I had to go from trans to 100 uh -huh. in <laughs> four minute sets. <laughs> And there were times where, uh, like, if I knew enough people in the room, I'd go, I'm transgender, you can figure it out, I'm doing a new joke. <laughs> and I'd go, and, and sometimes it would go well, and people would laugh, and, and I would have to speed through, because the, in the beginning, my first five minutes would be taking through, through the steps of what it means. Yeah. And then by the end of it, my other jokes were so good later, and I'd go, uh, it used to be a girl, now I'm a boy. Yeah. Which is sub completely un PC. Oh, yeah. Trans people super offended by that. Mm -hmm. You didn't ever used to be a girl. You've always been a boy. Yeah, sure, I know that. In my head, I've always been a boy. Yeah, but at one point, I was Courtney who lived and looked like a girl, and I was in Girl Scouts. Yeah. So I don't <clears throat> know what you want from me. Yeah, and I think that it's healthier to acknowledge that than it is the way some of, pe some of the people treat it right now because it's like, now you're completely f trying to forget or erase a whole part of your life, and that did happen. Yeah, and that's a big that's a big thing for me because I think people should be allowed to live their lives the way they want to if they want to not acknowledge that. But it's who, what made me who I am, and I've said this before, but like when you start not telling the truth about things that you did in your life, then you have to remember that. Mm -hmm. And at one point, someone asked me, I was doing a French braid, and they're like, well, where'd you learn how to do that? And I was like, I can't say Boy Scouts. <laughs> I can't say I learned to I got French my French braid, braid badge. In Boy Scouts. I didn't. I got it when I was a brownie. <laughs> I got it when I was just before selling not Boy Scout cookies, Girl Scout <laughs> motherfucking cookies. Yeah. That's... So it was just... I think some of my openness came from me just not wanting to hassle with lying. Yeah, that's me too. Yeah, I don't want to have to think about things. I don't want to have to remember that I, who I told and who I yeah. didn't tell. And it's like, okay, let me just say it the way it was, and then I don't have to keep Absolutely. track. Absolutely. I used to lie about where my, I met my first partner. I was like, I, used, I first I started by telling people we met through friends. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, shit, I can't remember. And then I tell people, okay, Cupid. And I was like, fuck. And then I told people Grinder. And then I was like, fuck it. It was Craigslist. It was Craigslist. I met my first partner on Craigslist. Okay, guys? Were you, did you date him afterwards? I dated him and raised his daughter for seven years. He was the one you were with when I met you. Yes. Okay. The yeah. Australian. I remember, yeah, when yeah. I met you, you were getting ready to go to a gun show. Yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, I remember you telling me, yeah, we're going to That was his thing, show. which is just the worst place to bring me. Because he's like looking at all these awesome guns, and I'm like, ooh, a pink one. <laughs> he's like, tone it down. There's guns everywhere, and everyone here hates what you are. <laughs> yeah, well, that's <laughs> – that could go for a lot of Texas, though. It's you true. know, like it's, it's it doesn't have to be a that's gun true. show. In fact, there might be less guns at the <laughs> gun show than there are when you're at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, it was weird when we were in Chicago together because when we did the show in Chicago, and I tell people the story every once in a while about how I had to – intercept you and take you down the different way yeah because that guy was angry with you oh my god it was so so what was great too and who was it it was um dylan garcia dylan garcia he came up y'all are kind of flagging me down and so i end my set early because i can't figure out what's going on because this guy wants to punch me yeah which is an exciting part of your career <laughs> I mean, it really is. You know that you've done something right when someone wants to hit yeah, you when you get off stage. Really did you know <laughs> above anyone Believe else. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I know. It's not a day <laughs> in the life of Ty Rivera if no, someone doesn't want to punch me. <laughs> uh, 
So Dylan, I get off stage and he puts his arm around me, like kind of like shakes hands and pats me on the back and he goes, watch your back, which is the worst thing he could have said uh-huh. because now I think there's like a sniper <laughs> in the top of the balcony. I'm so scared. He could have said, hey, there's a guy who wants to punch you. Like she could have just said that or hey, go the other way. But he said, watch your back. And I'm like, I'm about to get shot. And then they take the guy and they keep him away from me. And it was an old guy uh-huh. who had come to his son's bachelor party. Yeah. And everyone else at the bachelor party loved us. Yeah. And he was so mad at you, though. I know. And I, I didn't even understand what he was mad about because I don't, I haven't seen your set in a while, especially like a longer set. Yeah. But like your set at that time was not at all in your face, even though you were open. It wasn't like a, wow, he's doing this, you know, super edgy and it's all dirty. No, I've always been very um, goofy and, like, cute in my trance. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, It's nothing like your set, which you were doing. How dare you? At that... How dare you? The only How'd thing I get our sets slammed? have in common is they're both funny. <laughs> How'd I get slammed in this Jesus? You've talked about my I should have let him set. hit you. I should have let him hit you. <laughs> but no, if, because the juxtaposition of my goofy, hi, I'm a cartoon character and I'm not threatening at all. And you're, I gave a blowjob to a dude in a bush <laughs> right after each other. And this guy's like, oh, Ty's great, but that little cartoon character. Character's got it coming. You know, I appreciate you using an exact quote, though, for my joke. Because that is like, a lot of times people go with something really wild. And I was like, yeah, that's actually my joke. (laughs) (laughs) It was my closer. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. And so thinking about the fact that he was threatened by me and not by your... He was angry with you. (laughs) You did it. It was, it was a, it was a... That was a great trip, too. That trip, I have so many stories from that trip. That's why I want to go on another trip with you. Because I have the story of, at the, I don't know if you still do, but you used to ca- carry a, a merch purse. Uh-huh, I still <laughs> have a purse. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we made friends with the owners of the one of the hydrate, top gay clubs hydrate. there. Hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of Hydrate. And they loved... Uh, they loved you so much that they sat us down in the middle of the club. First time I've ever had gay club bottle service. Yeah, they gave actual bottle service. And I have never done that at a gay club. Ugh. And we sat in the middle, and then at one point, you disappear. And I'm like, well, I know where he's at. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take your merch purse, and I'm going to go home, and Ty will be able to get home. And you... Get home. The guys from Hydrate call me. Hey, we're sticking a uh, tie in a cab. I was like, okay. And get home. You lay down on the bed, and you're drunk, and you go, thank you for leaving me. Some people think they need to babysit me, and those guys are fuckers. <laughs> and you, you, you thanked me, drunk laying on the bed for leaving you. And I was like, this is going to be a real friendship. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you remember that part. No, I still don't remember <laughs> that whole, you know, I'm kind of worried about that night sometimes because I don't know if anything ended up on video or what I did, you know, because yeah. that's when, well, yeah, I would imagine those guys took pretty good care of me. They did. But I was just like, I don't remember anything from like, I rem- well, I remember when we were partying, you know, went to a yeah. couple of clubs. We did. And yeah. then uh, we ended up at Hydrate was the last spot and that's where they had the bottle service for us. And then that bottle service was just more than I could handle. Well, and how do you, and that's the thing is you always, first of all, you always got to give yourself a pass. And if you're going to give yourself a pass, it's the night that someone serves you up $500 bottle service for free. Yeah. That's the time when you let loose and you're okay with it. Yeah. And and, and the next day I was so hungover. You were so hungover that um, we, so we went and stayed at the same hotel, uh, me and my boyfriend, uh, this last month for his birthday. What are you calling? Because we stayed in... Soho? Public. Public, okay. Stayed in public, and I was like, the room was so nice there that Ty would have gotten had I not been there, because (laughs) Ty was so sweet and offered for me to come to Chicago, (laughs) and because of it, 
he got fucked out of this gorgeous room that it was supposed to be his and had downgraded to this double bedroom with me. And I, I, was, I felt so guilty. Yeah, Dylan got the good room. Yes. And, you, and you're like, I'll just get a different room. And we go in and he's like, well, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> this is moment. So he's telling him how gorgeous the room you would have gotten was. Let's go there and get a room. And we're walking to go get breakfast. And I go, this is the spot, Jacob. And he goes, what? This is the spot where I was walking with Ty the day after. We were so hungover that he dropped to the ground on the concrete. (laughs) And you go, the cold concrete feels so good. (laughs) And you're just laying in fetal position. I think I have the picture somewhere. Yeah, there's a picture of me. Yeah, I know it's (laughs) online, too. Like, we posted it on Facebook. I really did have a good time that week. But also, it was a a weird time, too. So, um, Yeah, it was weird. We had some hiccups here or there with that week. But we ended up really making it fun. And And I have a lot of fantastic memories. So do I. It's too bad that it would be unprofessional for me to tell all the behind the scenes, you know, know. What, the, what happened. But one day we'll be able to talk about it. Another thing I want to talk to you about before I forget is um, trans people in sports. You saw that big thing that happened. Yeah. In, that was the Texas, Texas, right? Texas transgender teen. Mm-hmm. Um, so the thing with trans people in sports For is, anybody that doesn't know... Uh, Trans male, so born female, now lives as male, um, was forced by the school, basically, yeah. to wrestle in the girls' division instead of the boys. Yep. And um, she ended up, he ended up winning uh, against a girl, and people were upset because they felt that it was cheating that she is now on hormones. Yeah, and I think that uh, I think that he made the right decision in wrestling because uh because now they'll change it. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Now they'll change it because I think that trans people should be able to compete in sports in the gender that they prefer. Mm-hmm. Because it really I mean, it's not an advantage for that guy to wrestle with men. Yeah. And I don't think it's an advantage for uh trans women to wrestle with women because the things that estrogen does to you, it really does wither your, your muscles and your bones. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think, I think he made the right decision by wrestling. I think there's going to be a lot of upset and then it'll change and they'll be like, you know what? Trans guy on hormones, you can wrestle with boys. That's the way I felt too. I felt like, you know, to the district or whoever it is that makes that decision, it's like, learn your lesson. Yeah, you know, let this person wrestle in the gender that they're they identify as. You know, is I don't understand the whole. You know, just get over it. I know, and the thing is, they shouldn't have let him compete in the girls. That's what they shouldn't have done mm-hmm. because then that, I mean, it's not fair to some girl who's, you know, I tell you what, I was tiny, tiny as a girl, mm-hmm. and I and now I still don't have muscles, but I have more than I did. Yeah, no, you have um, even from. When I met you to now. Yeah. You and bulked I, up a bit. Because I got back on testosterone. Yeah. Well, you went on that six-month break, right? Was yeah, it? Yeah. It was almost a year. Wow. Yeah. It's just because I was lazy. And my, my friend Bo, he goes, you can't half-ass being transgender, <laughs> Jeffrey. And I was like... Uh, Bo, you can half-ass anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we kind of noticed because there was a change in your... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was just like... Uh. I got girly again. I got real girly again. <laughs> yeah, there was a definite difference. It was like, okay. This it's, is- well, it's a problem. It's like when you get fat and you don't notice because you're with you all the time. Yeah. But then someone else sees you and you're like, oh, they've gained weight. It's the same thing with getting girly. Yeah, nobody else. Oh, you, everybody else notices you're more like, I'm just me. Oh, I'm, I'm just, just me. <laughs> Your voice is much higher again. And yeah. what about, because, okay, so now you're in a relationship? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's been for? Uh, that is two years now. Okay, because I remember there was a point in between where you were single and mm-hmm. you were actually on Grinder. 
Oh, yeah. One thing I've always wanted to know when it comes to trans men and grinder. Yeah. Is how does it play out? Because... I don't know what your grinder experience has been, but mine is usually pretty rapid. Yes. And so, like, you know, you jump straight to the, okay, how big are you? Yeah. And then, like, that kind of yeah. top so, or bottom, that, you know. Well, first of all, I have actually a whole BuzzFeed, uh, BuzzFeed post that, like, got pretty popular. It was 13 times it was weird to be a trans guy on Grinder. Yeah. Because most of them are... You know, yours, yours is a dick pic that they get sent. Mine is typically, so you have, a, so do you have a dick or what's your vagina like? And things, it's all straight to the point. Yeah. But I'm pretty good about it. I'm still on Grinder because my relationship is uh, open, but we talk about everything. Okay. So it's not like, either of us go and sleep with somebody. Mm-hmm. It's that we talk about it, and if we decide that's okay, then that's okay. And it says, I'm an F to M. If you don't know what that means, then don't message me. Oh, then I'm not your type? Mm-hmm. In an open relationship, we talk about everything. Don't send me a dick pic as your first message. Oh. And that's my... I like. I outline a lot of it. And like just like yesterday... Somebody sent me a dick pic, and I go, oh, man, you didn't read my profile? Mm. And he goes, I did, but I still thought I could persuade you. (laughs) Which I thought, good for you, dude. (laughs) At least you owned up to it. Yeah, my grinder uh, currently just says traveling, but before that, it used to say you can chop off your head and send it home to your mother. I'm all about bodies. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. We are genuinely the opposite person, (laughs) which is why there are these moments. I was talking to Mark and Fausto of Feast of Fun, Uh who who me and you both did their show together. Yeah, that was a fun show. And had a blast. I was talking to them about you, and, uh, and I was saying, it just doesn't make any sense why me and Ty get along so well, because we believe... There's so much we have in common and so much we don't. Yeah, we're completely different, especially when it comes to dealing with other people. <laughs> like oh, <it's> yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I was a staunch Hillary supporter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So how'd that Hillary thing work out for you? <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go. Uh, and I'll say it again uh, because... Because you deserve it. Your best statement you made during the election cycle. Because I tell you what, I got so much entertainment from watching your pa- Facebook <laughs> during the election. Is when you said, I'm just like Donald Trump. A lot of people support me, but no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> it's just so perfectly tied. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that would, I, I did pat myself on the back a little <laughs> after that. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it got a bunch of likes. Yeah. It got more likes than pretty much anything oh, yeah. else I was You're posting. Like, this to girl's still got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while I'll do a this girl still got it post <laughs> on Facebook just to show people like, you know, yeah, I can I can oh. still get the numbers up when I need to, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Don't you worry about me. <laughs> when the heat's on, I can perform. <laughs> oh man. You know, I I'm so pro so many things that I think a lot of people forget that. You know, like I'm a lot more open to a to more than people would think. I just have different ways of expressing it and I don't always get people being whiny about what they want. That's where I get lost. Yeah, and uh, for me, I think a lot of it is that it's it's unfortunate and I dislike that so many people get tied up over our language instead of our actions. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've done comedy and been honest about our sexuality and our gender and our experiences isn't enough for them to still say, oh, well, Jeffrey, you're a misogynist and Ty, you hate trans people because Mm -hmm. you use the T word. You know, uh, it, it sucks that they discount everything we've done 
because of language sometimes. It's just not perfect enough for them. Yeah, and it's so silly to me because it's, with me, at least I get it when people, you know, get mad at me on some level because I'm like, okay, I know what you're saying. You're saying I should know better. Yeah. But I kind of do what I do to remind you that there are people that genuinely do not know and they think they're saying something. They think they're being progressive. And then you jump down their throat and you make them feel like a dumbass. And now they feel like, oh, okay, I guess I should never talk to a person like that again because I might mess up and say the wrong thing. And now you've closed somebody off that just accidentally used the wrong word. Yeah, they shut down. And that's the thing. That's why when I do the colleges, after my set, I do a Q&A where I challenge them to ask me any question they've ever wanted to ask a trans person. And I challenge them to be offensive. Mm Mm-hmm. And the reason that I challenge them to be offensive is because I want them to know that I won't be offended because the minute you jump down someone's throat, they shut down and they stop opening themselves to learning. Yeah. And then they're done with you. And then I'm the angry T word. And then everybody else they meet that's trans is also that same thing to them. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, this is my opinion of all trans people. And yes, it's unfortunate that that's the way people work, but... It is the way people work in a lot of cases. A lot of times if somebody has a bad experience with a black person, a Hispanic person, they don't think of that as one individual. They now think that they don't like black people in a lot of cases. Yeah, Yeah, because that's their singular experience. Yep. And I had somebody ask me in a QA, and a they said, my friend is trans and I've known her since elementary school and I misgender her sometimes. And when I do, she gets mad at me. And I say sorry, and I tell her I'm trying, but she always gets mad at me and, like, yells at me for not calling her the right gender. And I'm really trying. How do I tell her that? What? And I said, first of all, tell her that. She goes, I have. And I go, well, then let me tell you this. Just because you're transgender doesn't mean you're not an asshole. You can be something (laughs) and still be an asshole. Mm -hmm. You can have a disease and still be an asshole. You can be gay and still be an asshole. I know some assholes in wheelchairs. (laughs) (laughs) They act like those are. (laughs) Well, I do. They're (laughs) just an asshole on wheels. (laughs) (laughs) I know some assholes in wheelchairs. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's a band name. (laughs) Oh, geez, that's it's amazing. It's true, you know, it's like you have these people that, uh, like, for some reason, that's one thing I don't like What that's happening with LGBT, is people will act like because you're LGBT, you can't be an asshole. Like, mm-hmm. suddenly, everybody's just supposed to put up with every mood you have. Oh, yeah, it's totally. Like, and, then, and then also, they equate it to what you are. So I have trans friends who say... Caitlyn Jenner is not really transgender because of the things she believes. No, Caitlyn Jenner's totally transgender. She's just fucked up in a lot of ways. Yeah. And that's okay. But don't discount the fact that she's trans just because you think she's an asshole. Well, that's what I also don't think is fair about the way that they play both sides right now. A lot of the PC LGBT people, when I say they, that's who I'm talking about, is the other day... Um, I really did agree. Did you see that? Um, there was a trans woman by the name of T.S. Madison that did that uh, speech to Caitlyn yes. Jenner. Well, it was basically like a Facebook Live or whatever yeah. that she had done. I didn't watch it, but I read about it. Yeah, I T.S. Madison, I've never met, but she's a lot like the girls that I knew coming up that are like a little bit more hardcore. And, yeah. you know, and so that... And I was fine with everything she said, but to me, it was more like if she had said that to another trans person that wasn't a Trump supporter or a Republican, then uh, that entire politically correct trans movement would have come after her. It would have been an outrage. But because she was saying it against somebody that identifies as a Republican, suddenly everybody was like completely on her side and they didn't mind that she used the word tranny and she like, you know, because she used a bunch of, you know, like 
different terms that otherwise would be considered inflammatory, but because they were on your side this time, suddenly everybody's like, yeah, she really told her, you know? Yeah, and there's a mil- and that's what's crazy, too, is that there are people, so many people in the world who don't know a trans person, who've never seen one, never met one, and then you get inside of our community, and there's so many factions mm-hmm. where... And then also so many labels now, and I just... I'm sorry, but I... I I don't care about all the labels. Me neither. Yeah. I I think we should have less labels. I understand you want to identify as what you are and that's cool, but uh. Yeah. No, and it's 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 I'm not down with the them and they. Yeah. Like for it's an hard. individual. I I'm, I'm just And there's Z's. Yeah, I know there's Z's. Z's and Zems and yeah, stuff. Zem, yeah, the yeah. Zem I heard about. All of that I'm completely ignoring. And I don't care if you want to identify as whatever you want to identify, that's mm-hmm. fine, but you're not putting those words into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple things go into this <laughs> mouth, and it's not a Z. It's not a Z, and it's not a Zem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, I mean, like, and I'm not going to disrespect anybody, but at the same time, I just would rather not deal with you if you're going to be weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! It's, it's true though, you know. I just would rather that, just yeah. I've I've never met a Z or a Zem before. I've met a them, but I, it, it was just a college kid <laughs> who. And I'm sorry to discount college kids. I love you. You're wonderful. I love doing shows with you, but but I think in colleges you forget that the world is not college land. Yeah. College land is very different. Mm-hmm. Well, know. the world doesn't care about your idea, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> what you think you're going to do. Most people are like, yeah, well, this is the way it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You either work at this factory or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'm sure I'll meet a they, uh, 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 they or a them that I'll end up liking enough that I'll be like, all right, I'm going to humor you. And then I'll just be on that train, too. Yeah. But I just don't get it's on crazy thing. trains. You That's know? the thing. You end up dating a them. Yeah, and, you know, it, I my biggest thing is I have no problem respecting people for whatever they want. You just have to be patient. Yes. And maybe maybe somebody who identifies as both genders of them is the only person in the world who can contain Ty Rivera. <laughs> it has got to be a double person. Yeah, you might be right on that. <laughs> who knows? You know, one thing that I had problems with, because I have another friend that's... Uh, let's see, how many friends do I have right now that are <laughs> gay and trans? There's... Only two right now that are gay and trans. Oh, I see. I thought you were trying to count how many friends you have, oh, and no. you only have two. Well, you know, that's uh, closer to five. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm counting my dogs. Yeah, my dogs are two of them, so <laughs> there you go. There's one more out Congratulations. there. Congratulations. <laughs> um, two but, that are gay and trans. Yeah, um, gay trans men. and gay so and trans men, okay. So... Um, one thing that I had a problem with with uh, the other one when we first met, because we've been friends for like close to ten years now. Yeah. Um, at first, he was uncomfortable with me Is calling him girl. No. Okay. Um, not even in entertainment. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, lives here in L.A. Uh, he had a problem with me calling him girl and she. And it was oh, like, in gay speak though. Yeah, and we yeah. had to eventually have that chat because he tried to give me the. And Listen, I like, girl. Either we're not going to be friends, or you're going to be cool with girl. Yeah. All right, lady. <laughs> yeah, you're a gay man. This is the way I talk to gay men. I'm not yeah. disrespecting you. I'm not misgendering you uh-huh. in that way. You're like and you know. You're not. You're not the first, and you're not going to be the last if you're gay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it's just not the way it works for me. You know, I was just. And I am one of those gays. A lot of people don't even realize that because they always see me in the, like, comedy sense and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah, when I'm with my friends, it's always girl and bitch and Miss Thang and, yeah. you know, all those things. That's just the way we talk. Yeah. And it's great. And also, it always bothered me when people made a big deal about it, when people will say stuff to me like, 
like, oh, girlfriend or something and be like, oh, and then they'll go, oh, I, I call everyone girlfriend. And they do that secondary apology. I'm like, if it didn't look like I was getting offended, then don't fucking apologize. And now you've done the worst thing, which is the conversation and fun has now stopped so that we can f- discover my gender again. Yeah, it's now educational. It's exhausting. And I tell that to my family, too, because my my family go, yeah, when she was a little girl, uh, I mean, he, and I'm like, no, say when she was a little girl, because back then I was living as a girl and that doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. So please. Yeah. I had a guy jump down my throat the other day because I, um, posted on Facebook uh, because here's the thing. Um, I have a friend who posted like, I'm just going to give, like, a short version because I don't remember her exact word, so it's not going to be the quote. But she was like, I think if you're a man, if you're born with a dick, you're a man. And if you decide you want to chop that dick off, that that's mental illness or you have mental illness. Okay. And then she was like, but I don't care which bathroom you go to or which bathroom you use. So to me, the way I felt about it is a trans person that read that should concentrate more on the fact that she's okay with people going to the bathroom they want to go to Mm -hmm. and then later on worry about, okay, let's see if we can make this person kind of understand. Right. Totally. And also, I think people need to realize that uh, a couple things. One, some people are beyond saving, and that's okay. I had a grandmother who was... Super racist, mm-hmm. and she had a uh, she had a friend that she'd been friends with for like thirty years, who she still referred to in conversation as the colored lady down the street. When I came out as a lesbian, I never told her because she had made a comment to another one of my uncles about how if she found out anyone in her family was gay that she would hate herself because she created a life that was going to rot in hell for all eternity. And instead of coming out to her, I decided to let her have her last couple years with me with love and not have her destroy herself with worry. Because mm-hmm. I knew she was beyond saving. And she And you she, also knew she was right. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was beyond saving and so was I. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, And the best thing you can do is just be a good person around those people, and eventually they'll see that you're normal and there's nothing different from you. The more I hang around people, nobody hates me. Mm -hmm. Nobody does, because I don't give them a reason to hate me. And then all of a sudden, they're friends with a trans person, and they don't think about it anymore. And that's it. Yeah, that's what I always... When I hear statements like that, the reason it doesn't bother me as an LGBT person is because I always feel like limited exposure, but I like where they are in their process because at least they're not giving people a hard time about trying to go to the bathroom that they need to go to. Totally. You know, so for me, that's more the victory right there. As long as you're cool with another person having their rights, we can work on, like, the specifics later. That's the thing. And so she's wrong. She's totally a fucked up person. Absolutely. I think we can agree with that, that she's a fucked up person for thinking anybody who's trans is mentally ill. But one of the things that I can't stand right now is that It's never enough right now. And people don't realize all the steps we've taken and that when I was younger, there was no such thing as a trans person. I had to figure it out myself. And every time something happens and someone wins for a role as a trans person and everyone freaks out that it wasn't a real trans person to play that role, I say... I remember when there were no fucking movies about Mm -hmm. trans people. And God damn it, I'm so happy that we can have these movies and people can win awards for them. And a lot of times straight people have to play LGBT people because we're not going to be hammy enough for it. Yeah. We're too subtle. Totally. Also, uh, I don't think I can think of a trans person who would be a better actor than uh, Eddie Redmayne was in The Danish Girl. 
I saw that movie. It was actually really good. He, he, the way he played it was amazing. And people say things like, the way he was over the top and girly and things like that. And I go, guess what? When I first transitioned, I spoke like this and I tried to watch football. Because when you first transition, you do go over the top. Uh-huh. And then you settle into who you are. Uh-huh. You know, so he's... You do it when you come out as gay, too. You get all the rainbow shit, and you're fucking oh, yeah. gay, and then you get over it. Yeah, and then suddenly you're And you're just like, like, I'm just a person, yeah, and I like cock. It's a part of my life. It's yep. not, yeah, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be I don't a need parade rainbow everywhere I, I go. No, I don't need <laughs> rainbow flags. I just need dicks. <laughs> yeah, you can keep the rainbow flags. <laughs> I'll <laughs> keep the dicks. <laughs> you're so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> And this is another thing that I love about you, Ty, is that we can get so serious and then fall back into being silly. (laughs) Back into just keeping the dicks. Just keeping those dicks. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's... uh, And it's... uh, Oh, so what I got in trouble for saying, or what the guy wanted to get me in trouble for saying, was like, I I, I said... um, I have a lot of trans friends that admit to being fucked up. I always think they're the most healthy. And that's the way I feel with almost anybody. People that really own their shit because no matter who you are, you're fucked up. Yeah. It's the people that try to make it seem like they're living a perfect life. Those are usually the ones that are the most fucked up because it's like you're trying to pretend you're something that none of us can be. Mm-hmm. None of us can ever be perfect. It's just not the way it works. I don't care how straight you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care. Like all of that puts even more pressure on you. Absolutely. So to try to pretend like we're not all fucked up on some level, it's like, no, we should be fucked up. Absolutely. I'm transgender and I'm so happy living as who I am. I still suffer from depression and I'm still an alcoholic that has to deal with that. And that's the thing people don't get. You can be fucked up and still be a healthy person and still be like Mm -hmm. actually owning that is what helps you be like, Okay, you know, because I mean, like, yeah, I have my shit and I get into it every once in a while with people on Facebook or whatever like that. But anybody that hangs out with me knows that I'm actually a happy person and life is going as well for me as it is for anybody else or can be for anybody else. It's not like that, you know, like, oh, I'm just constantly in this torment over public opinion. Like, you know, life is... That's how you get your microaggressions out. That's how I get everything out. (laughs) I say the most horrible things and I know that... One day, I'm going to have my Milo Yiannopoulos moment and lose my book deal over something I said in Facebook. I tell you what, (laughs) I will ride that train to hell with you, (laughs) laughing the whole way down. I appreciate it. (laughs) I'll be your passenger. (laughs) I appreciate it. And I'll say, you know what? I was there when we we said this was going to (laughs) happen. When it all goes to shit... I'll be there. (laughs) I appreciate you, Jeffrey. (laughs) So where can people find you, Jeffrey? People can find me just about everywhere at Hey Jeffrey J. Hey Jeffrey J. Hey Jeffrey J. That's it. And that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that bullshit. And then they can find us together when we do a show together, which we will plan. Yeah. No, I'm uh, starting to do a gay show in Long Beach. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, so I'll try. Hopefully I can get you on that one. The main problem with you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there's more than one. (laughs) The main one is your schedule. You are super busy. So I know. It's like trying to even trying to figure this out. I'm glad we were able to make this happen today when you hit me up and you were like, uh, or do you want to do another day instead? I was like, no. No. If today works, we're doing today. Yeah, that's great. I know because we've been trying to do this show for ages and we've been trying to get you on on our show and then then everything's crazy there. So um, I'm so glad we did it. And especially now with everything that's going on. Yeah, and uh, let's be honest, I've slowed down a lot. Uh, I've slowed down a lot, so <laughs> it's been me trying to track you down in the last couple of months. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, and uh, any TV spots coming up or that? No, I just had one released. In fact, I did a documentary on Channel Four, which is circulating right now, which is the British television. 
uh, on transgender bathroom bills. So it's called My Trans American Road Trip, and it's out right now, and you can find it online. And the promo f- pretty much features me, which is pretty great. What, what's it called again? My Trans American Road Trip. This my- trans lady went around the United States and sat down with my parents and everything. So it was pretty cool. That's great. Yeah, my friend um, Deborah McAuliffe, it, well, she's a Facebook friend. Uh, she had said she saw you on BBC. Yeah, yeah. That's so it. she was super excited because I mentioned you on something, and then she was like, she was like, "Oh, Jeffrey J. I'm familiar from." from and yeah, so people know me overseas, but not here. Well, it's pretty great. It's better that way. It is. You're a trans Russell Peters. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm a Russell Peters. You're the Russell Peters of the trans world. Oh, my God. It looks like he's had more work done than me, though. <laughs> well, you shut up. Russell's my friend. I'm going to have to edit that. <laughs> now, my fucking age four. You've got me flustered. <laughs> Everybody, you can find me at America's Favorite Fag.com. None of this will be edited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you.